Welcome to the fastest staff in town. Today, we are going to begin on Lamed Vav Amid Zion. We are going to begin on Lamed Vav Amid Beis, about four lines from the bottom by the two dots, with the words Melam do Midrash Halachos Vagados Avalo Yilam Denu Mikra. So this goes back on the Mishnah on Lamed Hamid Beis that discusses that a person who makes a neder that he's not allowed to derive Hana from this person. So we still say that as long as that person who is the teacher is not being paid, is not being compensated, that he's allowed to teach all these different things, which are matters of Torah Shabbat Peh, but he could not teach Chumash, well, to understand why not, because he's not getting paid anyway, so what's the benefit? Um, he says... Malamid who has bonavis benais of mikra. You can teach the children, his this man's children, chumash. Okay, so we have to understand the reasoning for all this. So let's see the gemara. So mikra my time alo ilam denu. If you're not getting paid anyway, so what's the hana over here? You're, so why do we say that he can't teach chumash? The answer is mishum de kamahani le because he's getting hana. He's getting benefit from this. And on this, the Ran points out again, It's a situation where there's no money is being paid. As we're going to see on the next Omud, that a person who is a teacher of Torah Shabbat Pet is not allowed to receive compensation for having teaching Torah. So, So, if that's the case, you can't teach him chumash because you're, he's getting enough from you. So then the question is, so why are you allowed to teach him Torah So Omer Shmuel, b'makam shenaitlan schar al hamikra. It's our mission is talking about a case that a person does get paid for teaching chumash, ve naitlan schar al medrash, but they don't get paid for Torah Pet. And therefore, the whole idea is like this: since you're not going to uh, receive sechar anyway, so you don't have to pay him. So you're, he's not. Um, there's no hana being exchanged. There's no money is being exchanged. However, when it comes to paying this person for teaching chumash, so let's say you don't pay him, so you're getting hana because you maybe someone else you would have to pay, right? Or you actually are going to have to pay him. So because of that, he's getting hana from you. So therefore, because of that, you're not allowed, this person's not allowed to teach. So my Pascha, why do we say that our Mishnah says that when it comes to certain elements of Torah, namely Torah Shema Peh, that you don't get paid. However, when it comes to Torah Shema Chsav, you do. So we continue to Laman Zayim and Alef. HaKam Ashmon, the Afil B'makam Shanaitlan Sechar, it's coming to tell you that even a place where you do get paid, Al HaMikra Shari Lamishkol. The only time you're allowed to take a salary is only for teaching Chumash, Tar Shabbat Sav. Al Hamedrish, Loi Shari, Lamishkol. However, if a person is just teaching Chumash, then you're not allowed to, um, the other way around, Pumfakert, when it comes to teaching only Medrish, only Tar Shabbat Pei, you're not allowed to get a salary. So you're only allowed to take a salary when it comes to Tar Shabbat Sav, but not when it comes to Tar Shabbat Pei. Question is why not? So it says the Gemara, Maishna Medrish. How come when it comes to Torah Shabbat Peh, the low, they're not to get paid? Dechsev. It says in Sefer Devar, Oisi Siva Hashem Beisahi. So I commanded on during this time regarding Moshe, Lamin Eschem to teach them Torah. Dechsev. And furthermore, it says, Re Lamadati Eschem, Chukim Mishpatim Kasher Sivani Hashem, that I taught them all the different laws and all the mitzvos. So mani bechinam afatem nami bechinam. So just like when Moshe taught the Torah, he didn't get compensated from Klai Yisrael; he did it free. So too, when a person teaches Torah Shabbat Peh, it also needs to be bechinam. You're not allowed to be compensated. So mikra nami bechinam. How could therefore you be paid when it comes to to mikra? The pasuk doesn't say that Moshe was only teaching Torah Shabbat Peh; he was teaching Torah in general implying Torah Shabbat Chzav too. And he didn't get paid for anything. Moshe didn't get paid for Torah Shabbat Chzav. We don't see that in the Pasuk. 
It wasn't being paid at all. So therefore, why do we say that you're allowed to ever be compensated for Torah Shemech Sav? You shouldn't be compensated for any any teacher teaching Torah. So Rav Leimer, Rav says you're right, but you're not really getting paid for your teaching. Rather, Schar Shimor. You're being paid um, for watching the child. It's almost like, and ironically, teachers say, well, I'm not a babysitter. But the truth is, according to this shot, not that you're a babysitter, you're teaching Torah, but the reason why you receive payment is because you're doing something in which is Schar Shimor. Because if the parents did not have you teaching them, and those parents, let's say, have to go work somewhere, so they would have to hire someone to make sure that their their children are safe and secure during those hours. So therefore, the fact that you're there, you are benefiting the parents that they would have had to pay someone to watch the child. So therefore, that's why you're allowed to be paid for teaching Chumash, which is generally for little children that are dependent. Rabbi Yochanan says the reward that you get is because not of teaching Torah, but the Pisuk Tamim, knowing exactly how to stop, knowing exactly the different Nikudos, the vowels that are found and can in the in the Tamim. So that is the reward you're allowed to get. And on this Rashi says, um Eno Elwa Bamikra, this is there's only when it comes to actual the Chumash itself. Okay. So let's look straight in the round over here. Medina mutalito schar al mikra vo al medrash. So mikra din, as we see, you're allowed to be paid, compensated for chumash, for Torah Shabbat, but not for Torah Shabbat Pat. Mihu yeshmim kaimais. There are some places, shmachmir and al atzman, they're strict, shalito schar fil al hamikra. They don't get paid for anything. Kadesh shal yavalito min hamedrash. Because if you're being paid for Torah Shemaksav. Well, what happens if you happen to be teaching them Torah Shemaksav at some moment in your lesson? So maybe you're being compensated for that. So therefore, some people just don't want to get anything. Skipping a few lines in the Ran, Masnisin, Mesukma B'Mokam Shenaitan Sechar, Alamikra. We're saying, why is this person, uh, we say that, that you're not allowed to, that's what the Mishnah says, to make some achil between Torah Shemaksav and Torah Shemaksav, it says, denu mikra. You can't teach Chumash. Because normally these people would have to pay. And therefore, because when it comes to Torah Shemach Sav, the person is not strict. And they do accept. You're only allowed to take money for Torah Shemach Sav. And that's why the Mishnah says you can't teach them. Because they're getting hana. Kivan denoitan leha sachar. Since you're getting paid. Im miloim do In that case, this is how the Ron explains it. If let's say, because another teacher teaching Torah Shemachsav would be paid, and now because of this whole issue of not being able to get hana, you don't collect money. Nimsa mehaneu. You're actually benefiting that they're, you're saving them money because now indirectly, they don't have to pay someone else. al hamedrish lo mishkol. You're not allowed to get paid anyway for tarshim alpeh. The medina aser kim afar shvalzol hilkach kim mulam day medrish mechinam. If you teach them tarshim alpeh for nothing, lo mahani le v'lo imidi de agro mechayvlo. There's no obligation to have to have to pay at all. And it says lo inin halacha kaimel on hachi. You're not allowed to be paid to teach Tarsh Malpeh. Mihu, Hanimili Sechar Limud. You're not allowed to receive monies for Sechar Limud, for actually the teaching of Agar Batla Shari. The fact that you had opportunity costs, that you could be doing something else, that is why a person is allowed to be, to be paid. Okay, if we look down at the Ran, Ram Oimer Sechar Shimor, this, uh, the Mastama Waimdi Mikra Katanim Sweekan Shimor. That teachers um, in this situation, and they're teaching Mikra, which is one of the first things you teach, they're probably talking about small, small children. Piski Tamim, says the Ran, 
What's the nafkamina? What if you're teaching chumash to an adult? So the low boy shimor, they don't need to be safeguarded because they're adults. Um, so therefore, there's no compensation, and there should be no compensation in that case. The rab oser. According to Rav, who says that you should be able to be paid for Skar Shimor, so then you would not be allowed to be paid uh, for teaching an adult Torah. Um, skipping one more line, the Afil Migadu Shari Lito Sakhar Al Hamikr of Akach Haim Divi Harambam. So he says that Linyan Halacha, we actually we paskin like Rav Yochanan. And Rav Yochanan said um, that the notion is because of Skar piece of Tamim. So even if it's an adult, but if you're teaching them how to read the psukim and how to stop and all these meanings, then you are allowed to be paid. Okay. Let's uh, continue in the Gemara. So the Gemara says as follows. Tanan. Lo yalam denu mikra. <coughs> we learn our Mishnah. You're allowed to teach the child uh, Chumash. Now, bishul mamandi yamishkar pisuk tamim. I can understand the reason why a person is allowed to be paid is because of pisuk tamim. So, hainu duliyam denu. That's why you can't teach him because by you not getting money, as the Ron said, you're actually saving that family from having to pay someone else. What exactly is this going on over here? You're teaching this person Torah, the person who made the neder against you, but he's an adult. So, again, if, this is how the Ron says, because if it's Pesach Tamim, you could teach an adult Pesach Tamim, you should be able to be paid by a adult Pesach Tamim. But if it's Shimor, an adult doesn't need Shimor. So, B'Katan Katani. So, actually, you have to read in our Mishnah, it's like and our Mishnah is actually talking about a Katan, that you're teaching his, a child, or his child. Niba Katan Emaseva, of a Mlamanis Ban of Mikra, Katan Bar Banim Hu. What does it mean? It sounds like this child, his child doesn't have a child, Again, this is how you're supposed to read the Mishnah. You're now allowed to teach Chumash to a child alone. If he's a Gadol, then you could teach him and his children Chumash. Okay. Fine. You're not allowed to teach a child a new Torah lesson. Um, something which they've never learned before on on Shabbos. However, El Shainin Barishan, you can review something that you taught them previously. So Bishman the Armor, Skar Pisuk Tamim, the whole reason why when you're getting paid is because of Skar Pisuk Tamim, Hainu de In Kern Batil Bashabas. That's why we don't want you to teach it for the first time on Shabbos, because you're not allowed to earn money on Shabbos. Because you are allowed to be paid for Pisuk Tamim. So if you're teaching this for the first time, you should be compensated for that. But you're not allowed to work and be paid on, on Shabbos. If you look in the Ran, It's the first time. It's much harder the first time the kid learns it. That's why we don't want you to teach it for the first time on Shabbos. The Skar Shabbos Aser, not to work on Shabbos. Of Oshayin and Barisham, you can review it. Mishum da Chazar Shakli Agra. For reviewing, you don't get reward. You don't get the. You don't get paid. You get paid for the Tircha of teaching it for the very first time. And therefore, we don't want you to do it on Shabbos because it means you're working on Shabbos to get paid. Oman Diar Meschar Shimor. What nafka mean is it if you taught it to them the first time or the second time, or you're just teaching them uh, something else, like uh, a nursery rhyme? The reality is you're still watching them. <coughs> so you shouldn't be allowed, <coughs> which is in general a question, you can't babysit a child to be expecting to be paid on Shamas. So, but why is there a difference? Well, a time is scar piece of Shabbos, me usher, Havlahi, Havla Mishra Shari. The truth is, it's not an issue because there's a concept of Havla that let's say this person is not just working on Shabbos, he's a teacher, he works seven days a week, and he gets an annual salary. So, because of that, just like a exempt employee, he's not paid by the hour. 
Therefore, since he's not being compensated by the hour, but he has an annual salary, so therefore it all gets absorbed. So it doesn't have the appearance that this person is working on Shabbos, and therefore it's allowed. It says, Ran, yom ha-shabbos shar Okay. And that's the, the hector for why is a rabbi allowed to work on Shabbos, why all these different things. Um, because a person works not just on that day, works all the other time too. So it's mutter b'havua. B'havua mishra shari. So the sanya hasoyich es apoyl. Let's say you hire a worker lishmor es atinuk to watch a child lishmor es apar to watch your animal lishmor es azroyim to watch your field and its um, grains. In nice little schar shabbos, you don't pay them. For the work that they did on Shabbos, l'fichach. Therefore, as we continue to Laman Zayin Mabez, im of doi enuchai b'achriusam. Let's say one of these things gets lost on Shabbos, so they're not chai b'achraya. Says Rashi, hoyal ve'enu schir b'yoyim Shabbos. Since they're not being paid to watch it on Shabbos, so therefore, because of that, um, they're not considered to be. Um, like a Shemr Sacher says the Ran, um, Havi Lake Shemr Chinam. They have the lower status of a Shemr Chinam, someone who's watching an object for free, in which is not Chaim Gneva Vaveda. However, Imaha Yisker Shabbos, let's say he gets paid for the week, Sker Chaydish gets paid for the month, Sker Shana, he has an annual salary, so Sakhir Shavua, or he's paid. As Rashi, the Ran says, Shemit Achas, every for a whole seven-year bundle, Noisel Lashar Shabbos, then you do pay him for his work then, because of Havla, Lafikach, Im Abdu Chai Bachorayusun. So we in fact do see that this person is a Shemir Sacher, and there's no issue of Havla. So the whole Kasha doesn't stand, because we know that a person is allowed to teach Torah, Lachayra, to a child, even the first time, Bahavla. So why can't you teach a child for the first time on Shabbos? Mishum, the Yifnu Avo Hatshoin Dianuki Limitsvosad the Shabbata. Because, let's look in the Ran, Sha'avo Satinaikas, the children, the fathers of these kids, point in Limitsvah Shabbos, um, they basically wait for Shabbos. And that's a time that they will spend more time with their children and play with them. But let's say the teacher is teaching a brand new lesson. Then the father may end up not spending time with the children. That's what Rashi says. And therefore, they're not going to be able to have time to, um, to, uh, to, to be with their children. So this is a very fascinating thing. So why don't we want them to teach, uh, to teach Torah the first time on Shabbos? Because we want fathers to play with their kids on Shabbos. So we say, don't let them learn too much. Which is a, a fascinating statement. So the fathers will not um, want to interrupt their children from learning Chumash. And they'll want to spend time with their children, but they won't do that. But for reviewing, the father would interrupt since they could always review at another time. People are eating and drinking. The world is heavy. In other words, they're not used to eating these types of foods. And therefore, they're not feeling so well. They're not up to be able to learn as they normally would learn. That changing your diet, that can certainly cause um, issues in your gut, in your digestive tract. And therefore, that's why you shouldn't teach them uh, them Torah. Okay. So the one who says, the reason why a person can teach Torah and get paid for it is because you're teaching them Pesach Tamim. Why don't they mention the reason why you get paid is for watching them. Because they hold daughters, do they 
uh, do they require to be watched? So if you look in uh, the Ra in Rashi, it's pretty unbelievable. Benois shalab denois otayra. If you teach girls Torah shabachsav, me buying shimur in hulab or chai hula mepik of roy. Dechsiv kavoda bas melch penima v'lekul ukma baschar shimur. Girls don't need to be babysat for. Girls are generally not going to go outside and get themselves into a world of trouble. At least that's how it was back then. And therefore, because of that, they said, if we're talking about a blanket statement of being able to be paid for teaching children, that includes boys and girls. And girls don't need the same level of shimur. And therefore, a person may not be paid for that reason. According to them, they hold that Pisuk Tamim is also Midaraisa. And since it's also Midaraisa, so therefore the din is that you don't receive, you can't receive, uh, uh, you, just like Mikra, we said, uh, you don't receive Schar for that. So too, uh, like Torah Shabbat Peh or anything else, it has to be all Bechinam. Okay. Question, let's see a couple of questions for, before we get too far ahead of ourselves. Question five. Or you want to teach Torah to a person who made a who made a net against you. So in a place where he did not you don't get paid, no one is compensated for teaching that it's allowed. But If we're dealing with a situation where you do pay for a child, then it's also because the guy is getting hana, but by gadol it's a machlokas because whether you hold pisik tamim or shomer, um, a, a, a gadol does not need a uh, a shomer, and therefore for that reason, uh, you sh you're not there's no reason to pay him anyway. However, for pisik tamim you would have to pay. Okay, question six: How do noitlan schar al mikra? So why isn't one hold like one? So the one who says Shimor, uh, he doesn't say Pisik Tamim because he holds Pisik Tamim is, uh, is also in Derisa, and you don't get paid for that. And according to one who says uh, Pisik and doesn't say Shimor is because a person's Moider Hana is Aser Afbik Gadol, uh, a bonus, the lake of Shimor. It's also on uh, children, including daughters, and they do not need the same element of Shimor as as boys. Rav Ikabar oven back in the Gemara Rav Chanan Alma Rav. My dechsib. What does the following pasuk in the Chemi mean when it says Vayikru ba Sefer Torah Salkim? It was called out and read in the Sefer Torah Salkim. The Forish explicit v'soim seichel v'yavinu. Uh, so, what does all this mean? So, that's referring to the Chumash, the Torah Shavak Sav itself. So, all of these are considered to be um, all coupled and linked together, including Pisuk Tamim. Which therefore, this is a proof that, according to this pasuk, that pesuk tamim is also is also diraisa. Okay. The amrula elu hamasiris. Some say it's actually the masiris, which the Ran says mash shenechsar b'masira. Things that are missing, certain missing letters and ways of of that nature. Amr Rabbi Yitzchak mikra cipher. When it says mikra, that's cipher. What does that mean? So, um, we'll see that we'll see examples of this. But the Ran says, "Hakriya shemasu lanu harishaynim shenikra seifrim." The kriya which was given over originally, which is called seifrim, the iter seifrim, which are the excessive words, says the Ran, "Tevos yiseros extra uh, words shenichtavo liafos alashay," which is uh, mentioned to sweeten up and to make more beautify the language. Why? Why it's called an etor, which is like a crown. Okay, like a crown adorns the head. So too, there's certain words that are seemingly excessive, but it adorns the words. 
Vikarian vlo ksivan, certain things that are read, the way it's read and not written. Ksivan vlo karian, certain psukim are read, written a certain way but not read that way. It's all halacha, lo moshe masinai, um, fine. Mikra seifrim, so now we give examples. Mikra seifrim, Eret Shemayim Mitzrayim. So look in Rashi. Er, uh, Mikra seifrim, Eretz, Eretz, Koimer, Mashikar in Eretz, Eretz, the little Kasvinon, uh, the way, the fact that it's written Eretz, um, the little Kasvinon ha Havro, the little Kasvinon Yud being Aleph Laresh, there's no Yud between the Aleph and the Resh, between the, again, in the words, in the word Eretz, so how come sometimes there are, are extra letters or not? So that's what's come to tell you. If you look in the Rans, as Kishiyish, Bo Esnachda Nikra Eretz Bikamats. Whenever there's an Esnachda, which is a true reality, then the word um, by the Esnachda, it, we change it to a Kamats. Eter Seifrim. What is Eter Seifrim? Achar Tavoyru, Achar Teilich, Achar Teyasef, Kidmu Shorim, Achar Noigim, Noignim, Sitkoscha Kahari Kale. So these are all uh, languages that are somewhat extra, and they just give a little bit more of a background of exactly what's being what's being said. Karin vlok sivan, paras dil 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 lechtoi. So the word paras, that's um, how it is. Uh, it is read, but that's not what's actually. Uh, written over there it says the Ron Bishmuel who Lahashiv Yadai bin Nahar Pras Pras Kri Vok Siv. That's how Pras is read, but that's not what's written. Ish Dika Asher Yishal Ish Bidavar Halokim. So these words are not found in Tanakh, but we say it, we read it as though it's there, the word Ish or Boim. De nidvasa. Again, that word is not there, but we read it. La defleta. S dehugade. Hugad. Eli, the word Eli de hagayrin. The word Eli de hasoyrim. Halein karin vloksivan. All these things are at, are read, even though they're not written. Uksivan vlokarian. There are sometimes on the opposite, there are certain things that are written a certain way, even though it's not read that way. Nod Yislach, the word Na, as we continue, Lam Chesmad Aleph, Zois Deha Mitzvah, Yidreich Deha Dairich, of the drawing of an anchor, Chamesh De Pas Negev, Im De Chigoyel Halin, Ksivan Vulkarian. Again, these are all things that are written but not read. Amrav Achabarada, the Marava, Paskinan, the Laden Psuka, Latlas of Sukin. We used to read this into three psukim. So again, this is different interpretations, exactly how to be able to read the pasuk, words there, words are not there, etc. And these are all rooted in the Torah, and therefore, just like them, so too when it comes to pisuk talmim, this is considered, according to one manda Omer, as a din dear raisa. Okay, we're going to stop there. Let's see a couple more questions. Question TA12. Ma nafkimin ladina. What's the difference in pisak tamim deraisa o lav deraisa? What's the difference? After all, you still have to teach it. So the answer is whether or not when it comes to Isra Hana. Right? Im mukter litol al zesachar. So in the situation, are you allowed to teach uh, for that reason and be compensated for it? So if you hold Pesach Tamim as Deraisa, then you're not allowed, that's not a heter to be paid for because it's Deraisa. But if it's not Deraisa, um, then it is allowed. Okay. Fine. Question TB13. Mehema Tamim Shemotolito Schar Alimud Hamikra. What are the reasons why you're allowed to te- get paid for teaching Torah? And what's the difference? So I wrote Pisuk Tamim 
Shmiris Hayelet, guarding her babysitting. Maybe Pisik Tamim is Min HaTorah, or by a girl, which she doesn't need Shimor, Kol Kvoida Bas Melech Pini Madkan.